Strip everything down to image, word, idea. Without narrative, it means nothing. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Look at yourself. He met you since I go, Ranger. She, SG, I don't remember what she go, 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 say. Three, analysis. This is Swing Through Comics, episode 81. So, uh, sorry about that crazy, unprepared rea- uh, <laughs> intro, but here we go. We're doing it live, we're rolling. So this is uh, Super Sentai Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, published April 20, 2021, by Seven Seas Manga. Uh, what I'm focusing on specifically this chapter is Go Ranger Shogaku Gonensei, which is what I meant to say. That's the SG thing. Uh, directive number three, Trapped in the Mirrors, which originally published June 1975. The original writer and artist is Shotaro Ishinomori. The translation was done by Alethea and Athena Nibli, and the adaptation was done by Alexis Roberts and Don Davis. Lettering was done by Bambi, Eloriaga Amago, and Roland Amago. The book is 352 pages in total, and that's the whole collection of the Go Ranger manga, the complete omnibus done by Seven Seas Manga or 17 Seas Entertainment, whatever they call themselves. And this particular story is about 30 pages long. I've written a synopsis for it myself, which I will read to you now. And it goes like this. Mirror Mask lures Secret Squadron Go Ranger towards certain death by his devastating laser with Tsuyoshi Aka Ranger serving as the bait. So, uh, I've got topics to talk about for this review. So, here we go without further ado. Uh, I'm going to list them off real quick and then I will go back one by one and talk about them. So first we got the Esper Faint. Next, Real Film. Then, Birdie's Mini Rockets. Fuzzy Steaks. Lonely Aka Ranger. Shrewd Owl Ranger. Clever Momo Ranger. And then a discussion of the quote, look at yourself, which is a shortened version of turn around that mirror on your face and look at yourself. Uh, which I will be, in which I will be talking about the good and the bad of introspection. So, uh, first of all, I guess I'll, I'll just uh, go into this right now. I do recommend this. I've recommended the whole Omnibus so far. This was good. I would agree uh, that the uh, art is like a 5 out of 5 and the story is a 5 out of 5. In fact, um, just to, to detract real quick, uh, to tell you the truth that I am going to judge the art harshly, even though it's Ishinomori whose work I really enjoy, uh, last night I was reading Kika um, not Kikaider, <laughs> just I've got Kikaider on my mind. I was thinking about, no, rather, I was thinking about Kikaider earlier, now I'm trying to tell you that I was reading last night, uh, the Common Rider manga, because I got that omnibus too, and I will be starting up a review of that, hopefully within the next month or so. Anyway, I was reading that with my kid, and, um, there were some panels where I had to say, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's going on. I guess that's wind blowing and, and whipping up around uh, Common Rider. And uh, the kid offered, hey, is that, you know, why is there broken glass? And I said, I don't know. There shouldn't be any glass. They're in a graveyard. Anyway, uh, if, you're a super, if you're a real one, you'll figure out exactly what I'm talking about, uh, which part of the uh, omnibus that is. It ain't the first chapter, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go back into the review proper. Uh, despite the fact that I'm giving this a 5 out of 5 for story and art, uh, I just want to make sure that I do clarify that I'm not going soft. Anyway, here we go. So the Esper Faint was really well done, really well crafted. In the uh, in Ishinomori's uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past comic, or manga, I don't know how to distinguish it, um, from the Nintendo Power Magazine. I'm going to call it a comic book. Anyway, I'm pretty sure he, and I didn't check it, but I'm pretty sure the technique that he used as far as scripting the word bubbles or the thought bubbles of the Esper talking to a person uh, are the same in that, in Link to the Past, and in this. Uh, the formatting of them was the same. The type of dialogue or the way the dialogue was used was very similar to Zelda psychically calling out to Link as uh, Tsuyoshi getting psychically called out, so to speak, uh, to, to uh, rescue this girl who's supposedly an Esper. Anyway, I love the twist that she was an Esper. I love the, or that she was not in fact an Esper. And I love the twist that when he suits up as Aka Ranger and he puts his helmet on, he says, huh, I can't hear her voice anymore. I wonder if it has to do with the helmet. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. The first time reading it, yeah, maybe the helmet's blocking it for some reason, or maybe he's close enough that she's not saying anything. It, it's not really discussed. It's not really something we go into, but Ishinomori put 
a clue in there that it, she wasn't an Esper and that something else was going on, but it was also just kind of an interesting moment where the character is acting honestly. You don't have a narrator coming in there and saying, this is because such and such, because it would kind of spoil the, the surprise of the twist that she wasn't an Esper, but also... It, I, it just like textures everything and makes it more interesting. I thought that was a really clever bit of writing, and I like that he called it out so that kind of like, uh, I, I haven't read an Agatha Christie novel, but like, you know, mystery novel style. It's like, well, once you know the trick, uh, you go back and you see, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, here are the seams. This is where the transition happened. This is, you know, where you can tell that it's fake if you know what you're, what you're looking for. Kind of makes me think of the prestige. But anyway, um, I wanted to call it the prestige, but I just. Esper Faint is the best title I could come up with that for that little section. So I thought that was a really cool bit of writing, and I really enjoyed it. And I actually did read this twice. I read it once, uh, like over um, like a, a two days, and then I read it once in one sitting, which was pretty great. And then I re I just like looked at the art basically, mem remembering the story, and looked at it again. And that moment even hit then, um, based on like the facial reactions and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. So next thing, real film. It is hilarious that uh, as a reflection of the fact that this was made in the was it the 60s or the 70s alone. Okay, 1975. Yeah, they actually like the professor. Um, I don't know, Gon Hawkins. I can never remember his name. Um, I want to say like Etchy's popping in my mind, but I don't think that's right because that would not be appropriate. Anyway, um, I'm gonna call him Gon Hawkins. He uh, <laughs> he has a real um, like a, a real you know, film, real, R-E-E-L, projector in his base, which, I mean, it's a secret base. They maybe need to record footage of themselves fighting or sparring or record their interactions with uh, Black Cross Army and review them, or I, who knows why he has it, but it kind of makes sense that he has it. But it's hilarious to me that Mirror Mask has one of his goons uh, throw the reel, uh, showing the Ranger captured into uh, the cafe so that they, Go Ranger can get it and he can lure them into the trap. But, this does raise an issue, which maybe I should dock this and make it a 4.5 out of 5, because this messes with the story continuity and stuff. In the first issue, where they fought, uh, like, I don't know, Skullhead or Skull Mask, I think he was? Anyway, when they fought that guy, uh, Black Cross Army was searching for the location of the, Gon or the, the Go Ranger base, and apparently now they know the location of the Go Ranger base, and that's a problem, because... If they know the location of the Go Ranger base, then why are they luring them out? Although it does make sense for how they were able to get somebody to secretly implant the speaker in the helmet or the mask, or the, no, the bike helmet, the motorcycle helmet of uh, Tsuyoshi uh, in order to trick him and lure him into this trap. So honestly, I'm now, maybe I'm at 4.75 out of five because I've got mixed feelings. If they somehow discovered it through their spying or whatever, and then they wanted to strategically reveal that, to the Go Ranger, that would make sense. For example, if you're a high-level hacker, you will infiltrate somebody's system, and then you will uh, pull information out of there because you can copy. You don't have to cut and delete and stuff like that. You can stay in someone's system for a long time, crawl around in there, and spend as much time as possible. And like I said, absorb as much data as you can, and like set yourself up. Or you can, as soon as you have access to a, a, a system that you've breached, you can make it known to the person, which would immediately put up their defenses and cause them to take action, which could stop you from getting a greater exploit. So you can see it's like a gambit done by Black Cross Army to uh, slowly reveal what what all they know about um, the Go Ranger, so that they can more effectively attack them, you know, fool them, lure them, whatever. So. I think that's interesting. I think it would have been better if they had preserved their secret and we didn't know that they knew where the base was and we just figured that they followed Tsuyoshi or saw him somewhere else and then somebody planted the uh, the tracker or the microphone on him at that point uh, you know, during one of their other exploits. That I think that would have been a little cooler. What they could have done is had like maybe uh, Black Cross Army like sends out a pirate radio signal and it like covers all these radios and the Go Ranger hear, not see, uh, what had happened to him. Although I wonder if because it's a manga, Ishinomori wanted to show it on the uh, on the reel on the video so that you have an image of it um, Maybe that's what happened. I'm not 100% sure But regardless, you know, they send a note uh, Mask man sends a note to them attached to the reel so it could have just been you know I'm now taking over your radio to tell the Go Ranger this has happened to the leader or whatever, you know Anyway, whatever um, I'm okay with it. It's, it's a little bit of a nitpick because it didn't really bother me until I really got to think about it um, Next thing 
the Go Ranger have these rockets on their belts, which are sometimes drawn like mostly on their backs and sometimes drawn on their sides, which I'm not going to fight with right now. Uh, but apparently they're called Birdies Mini Rockets. That's hilarious to me. I don't know why they're called that. Uh, they're very funny. I wonder if now you, the, the belt design basically between the Go Ranger in the manga and Kamen Rider in the manga is very similar, especially because he doesn't have the controls and stuff like in the show. Um, as far as I can remember in the manga, he has, they look like rockets and they help him jump, especially after, well, later on in the manga run. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, moving on, fuzzy stakes. So this is a real problem that I have. <coughs> I'm not clear what these stakes are in this story. Because I know that Go Ranger, or Aka Ranger rather, or well, all the Go Ranger, have these like poison proof masks. So when Owl Ranger says to go ahead and poison Aka Ranger, I knew he was going to be okay. And then I know that their suits are bulletproof, so when the guys are opening fire on them, I knew that they were bulletproof. However, we have <coughs> the laser of Mirror Mask, which can, according to Aka Ranger, might be the only thing that could defeat them. And uh, I guess that knowledge dies with him. And I don't know if they kill all the goons there. They were knocked out and didn't hear it or what. Um, but, like, I'm not sure that the stakes are really there and really felt because I knew he was going to be okay. I knew Aka Ranger would be fine. I knew they were all bulletproof. I knew things were going to be okay. Uh, so I'm a little hazy or fuzzy on exactly what the stakes are and why I should care so much. I'm glad they defeated Mirror Mask. Uh, Ishinomori throwing in the line with Aka Ranger saying, Oh no, this laser could be the end of us does help it um and then i don't think they overcame the the laser cheaply i think they came it overcame it in a pretty clever way so i'm pleased by that overall but it does make me question as both an audience member and a writer myself what are the stakes here and do they really matter i was invested in the whole story i wanted to see them overcome this guy and whatever but i wonder is it not that they were in danger and do i not need my rangers my go rangers my power rangers my whoever to actually be in mortal danger each time and it's more about something else which i think it is and i'm, I'm gonna be getting to that so lonely aka ranger so tsuyoshi is going out on his own and doing stuff he thinks he's confident in himself he thinks probably because of the, of the stakes the, between his, his suit basically makes him invulnerable you could say so he's not concerned that he's going to be in danger and he's con sure that he can rescue this person as soon as humanly possible which is i'm sure what he would have wanted somebody else to do for him because his father died and you know all the other people who he knew ostensibly i can't remember i'm kind of blurring their um i'm kind of blurring things now between this origin of the uh, sg go ranger and the other go ranger so i'll just kind of leave that aside for now but you know he's desperate to save these people he doesn't think about putting himself in danger um but he seems really disturbed at the end of everything uh in the final uh panel or so He's shocked that he was deceived by this microphone and that this girl was not actually an Esper. And while he's at HQ with the other Go Ranger, he just looks depressed and sad and lonely. And maybe like he's doubting himself. Like, is he doubting himself whether or not he's worthy? Is he doubting whether or not he should be in this fight? I'm not exactly sure. But a bunch of pathos did come across uh, the manga panel. So that's good. It's just, it's kind of interesting. But I'm also kind of invested in that. Especially because it seems like Peggy is trying to reach out to him <coughs> and the others are concerned for him as well so is this about like building a team and being emotional um like i don't know emotional vulnerability or an emotional arc that akira or tsuyoshi is going on i'm not 100 percent sure so uh next uh shrewd our ranger uh, i thought it was really cool that our ranger just kind of you know ostensibly threw akira ranger under the bus and said yeah go ahead and gas him we don't care do what you want uh, because he knew he was going to get out of there. And, of course, the uh, Black Cross Army folks, uh, pretty much as soon as he was gassed for, I guess, long enough, and they were shooting... Well, I don't know if they started shooting yet or not, but they opened up the uh, the container, the mirror hall that he was stuck in, and then he was able to leap out. Uh, but that was pretty cool. And it's funny that, like, you know, Key Ranger doesn't get it. He's like, oh, don't gas him. And Midori Ranger's like, no, fool, like, it's okay. Remember, we're all invulnerable to gases with our masks. I thought that was a lot of fun. <coughs> so, uh, next in Clever Momo Ranger. I like that after Aka Ranger pointed out the laser was a danger to them, that Momo Ranger, who had solved the, the riddle of the Dodger thing, um, and was, like, had the presence of mind to say, like, hey, I don't know where 
uh, Tsuyoshi is. Has anyone else seen him in the beginning? Which kind of, you know, leads to all the action that happens here, and it lends to and it, it helps build up the theme of like loneliness versus teamwork and you know whatever Tsuyoshi is dealing with emotionally uh, so that all kind of works and is on theme together um, she is the one who figures out hey if we all jump up in the sky we can blot out the sun basically and make a shadow over mirror mask in order to take out his laser that was cool she also I believe in uh, I can't remember, I'm blurring manga again I think it was I think it was in this one. Anyway, I'm going to skip that. But anyway, I thought that was really cool that she gets to be clever and smart and tactical. And uh, I think it's a lot of fun. So, and then uh, finally coming to the quote, look at yourself, which is, you know, turn around that mirror and look at yourself. I wonder if Tsuyoshi needs or thinks he needs to turn around his mirror and look at himself or if he's going to be introspective. Uh, and, and that's something that's going to affect him going on. Now, there's only one more issue. Uh, there's only one more Go Ranger story, so I don't know if we're going to get to see that happen or if it's just kind of like these four Go Ranger story are, stories rather, are kind of giving a, a sketch, a rough sketch of the characters themselves and their adventures and you could, you know, they're going to have four adventures here and you could assume what their other, or imagine rather, what their other adventures would be like because Ishinomori is leaving the audience wanting more and creating like a good base for uh, the world of Himetsu Sentai Go Ranger. So, anyway, getting more to the point, uh, I like that uh, Tsuyoshi tells, you know, Mirror Mask to be introspective, but at the end, we get that quiet moment with him seeming like he's examining himself and he's reflecting on himself and trying to figure out something. And again, I said I don't know what it is, but it does leave me wanting more because I want to know what's going on with him. I'm sympathetic towards this guy and I'm uh, empathetic and I'm feeling like I, I want to know more of his story and I want to know more of the rest of the story of the rest of the cast mostly because they've just been enjoyable characters who are kind of around Tsuyoshi and he's probably the most interesting to me uh, except for uh, for Shinmei or um, yeah Al Ranger uh, in that other you know iteration of the manga that was he, he got some really cool stuff going on with him but in this iteration of it in this uh, SG Go Ranger um, I really feel like uh, Tsuyoshi the Red, of course, uh, is like carrying the show as far as, or the story as far as like emotional appeal, and he's like driving some of the plot. Uh, but I love that like they rescued him, that was really cool. Um, even though he didn't really need the rescue 100%, um, he still like needed them to come in order for him to get out of the trap. Uh, so that's, you know, that's interesting. Um, but it totally works for me, and I really like it. And, uh, yeah, again, I, I'm kind of shortchanging this section of talking about the self-reflection thing, but I think I've touched on it all throughout this analysis, so I won't belabor the point, uh, but I really liked it, and, uh, I don't know, I, like I said, I feel the pathos from this guy, and I feel this uncertainty about the future, and it really makes me want to enjoy and, uh, read the next, uh, the next issue, the next story, um, and I'll be kind of sad to see Go Ranger go away as far as the manga is concerned. Will I ever get to watch it on my own? You know, watch that subbed Go Ranger show? I don't know. We'll see. I'd like to, ideally, um, if there were more time. But uh, maybe <laughs> maybe I got to sell some books and then uh, create more leisure time for myself or more downtime for myself to do more of uh, this stuff even because I really love to have podcasting and analyzing stuff that I enjoy be a huge, a bigger part of what I do and spend more time on it because I'm keeping it pretty... Uh, short and consistent. Well, I'm keeping it short to try to keep it consistent as much as possible. So anyway, uh, I will get out of here. That's pretty much all I have to say about all of this. Uh, check out the show notes for links to more stuff. Uh, check out the audio, subscribe, like, uh, if you're on mjminus.com, which you should go there, you can check out the author analyzer and artist tabs and find all of my work. I have those constantly updating now. And, uh, yeah, everything I'm hundred percent caught up um, bringing the old stuff or tagging the old stuff properly so it shows up there and then now everything I make as long as it's tagged properly it'll automatically propagate into those feeds and you can keep 100% current with everything that I'm doing if you like and uh, I'd like you to do that and check out the support uh, menu as well uh, to throw some money my way you can go to Redbubble buy some stickers I have some tokusatsu anime other stuff themed stickers you can get there as well so anyway I ask that you check that stuff out and uh Stay tuned for another Swing Through Comics soon. Uh, I'm going to be catching up on Radiant Black, but first I must finish reading Go Ranger. So uh, after Go Ranger, look forward to me covering a bunch of Radiant Black. 
Um, we'll see how quickly I get those done. Hopefully it's fast. Anyway, uh, until no, next time, folks, uh, I'm MJ. I leave you with peace and blessings and, uh, yeah, be well until next time.